Electricast. Your role, my friend, is to the journey and to the path that you are taking, right? So this is how we start to move through and understand our relationships to the people in our lives along our spiritual awakening. Yes, we have soul contracts with family members, with friends, with lovers. And yes, we learn things from them. But at the end of the day, our main responsibility is to our path, is to our track, is to our journey. And if we get lost in each of the people that are getting on or not getting on, then we lose sight of what we are here to do as the individual soul expression that we are. Welcome to the Cosmic Love Antenna Podcast. This podcast is meant to encourage you to connect within so you can share your light with the world. And now, here's your host, Harrison Ma. Harrison Ma. Harrison Ma. Welcome, beautiful beings, to another episode of the Cosmic Love Antenna. You found yourself on a weekly installment of your inner connection to your outer expression, where I, your host, Harrison, here with a beautiful guest who I'll introduce in a second, really set the loving intention of pulling back the layers, restricting health, alignment, and love. And today you found yourself on another new community coaching episode where these shows that I've started doing really set the intention of taking a beautiful soul from the community who I'll get give space to in a second here to target a particular topic, right? Use them to support them, help them, but through them, help you deeper, right? That is really the intention of the show today. And we're going to get into the topic of spiritual awakening, right? So spiritual awakening. So have your hearts open around that. And what I would encourage you to do is share this episode out, right? If it give, gives you value, if it gives you insight and tips and practical steps to take today please share this with someone you love and what you can also do is leave reviews and comments over on apple and spotify and what i'll do is i'll pick the next community member to do the show with from those so please follow that heart pull with that i want to introduce the beautiful abdu wasam today all the way all the way over in the in the middle east the united arab emirates abdu welcome to the show my friend i always look forward for this meeting and uh, my intention for this meeting is just to be myself sharing my voice sharing my truth and to allow my intuition to tap in so what we're going to do now abdu is what i would what i would like to do here quickly before we get into the questions because you have you have some beautiful questions on your heart that you want to throw my way and we'll use them to support people deeper here what i want to do just before we get to that i would I would love to hear with this topic, Abdu, super quick here. Why is the spiritual awakening topic? Why is it important to you? Well, actually, uh, Harrison, I'm I'm a, I'm in a healing journey myself, and I I born and I raised in uh, in uh, Middle East, where uh, we have uh, many taboos that rule all of our uh, thinking and the way we act, the way we behave. So. Since I started the journey of healing and I find myself in a space where I'm facilitating a safe space, so I I started to be more connected to my divinity, to know more about uh, uh, what divinity is, what spiritual awakening is. But uh, I never had that type of source that you that you represent. So uh, it it really means to me to be here today. It's also serving my own healing journey as well. Mm. And uh, Abdu, first of all, I love you very much. Thank you for sharing that. And it really shows, just for people out there listening, that this spiritual conversation and the, and this awakening process, this applies to each and every one of us, no matter our skin color, no matter our culture, no matter our gender, no matter our you know our sexuality. It is all. It is a foundational and fundamental to each and every soul that is on this earth. So this is really, you know, I love it, my friend, and thank you for representing that. Abdu, let's let's start here now with your first question. What is the what is the first thing on your heart you wanted to ask that we can dive into? I will start slowly, easy. My first question is, what is spiritual awakening means? And uh, why it's, uh, how does spiritual awakening would serve me in my healing? Mm. So for me, for whoever listen i uh, i think that uh, that might be a good thing to start with yeah so i love it my friend and it's the perfect question to start with 
in terms of you know what is the spiritual awakening and why is it important to our healing journey there are many many definitions and many perspectives and many opinions of this but what i'll do here is obviously share my own from my own experience and how i would define a spiritual awakening is coming back to the truth of what we are and the truth of what we are is a beautiful human being have beautiful spiritual being and powerful spiritual being having a human experience right that is really the truth in many ways i've seen it in my journey i've seen it on this show and i've seen it in the people that i've got to help so that is a very simple and fundamental understanding of what a spiritual awakening is is right we awaken to that truth we awaken to the fundamental nature of what we are in terms of how it helps our healing journey abdu is most <laughs> most if not all of our healing that we need to do across mind body spirit and emotions is due to disconnection let me say that again most of what our healing involves around our physical mental emotional and spiritual journeys comes from disconnection right a lot of it is trauma based right but there is a lot of disconnection but when i say disconnection what do i mean disconnection from what disconnection from our truth disconnection from our power disconnection from our ability to heal ourselves and connect deeper into our not just our healing journey but our divinity and spirit which connects us back to that awakening word right so i'll land it there but does that answer your question my friend absolutely yes and uh, it gave me uh, it gave me even more questions but uh, i i came with a set of questions that i want i i intended to start with and uh, some of my questions are totally coming from my truth coming mm. from what you say even mm. so uh, I, i will mix that and this yeah. um my 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 common question is uh based on what you just shared uh, what is shadow work and how um how it's uh, it's important to be connected to to my divinity to my spirit to mm. be able to carry on or move forward in in shadow work that I'm doing mm-hmm. so abdi let me just say quickly here you know i appreciate you sticking to your questions but if something else rises up in you and something else your intuition ask, tells you to ask something else please i would i really want you to encourage you to follow that okay but let me answer this question here in terms of what is shadow work and how can we connect it to this spiritual awakening right put simply i would define shadow work as bringing back into the light the parts of us that we have either consciously or unconsciously repressed right so the example that i give that i think either a lot of people listening can personally relate to or have seen it in their world let's say that i was born into this into this incarnation as a as a woman or a man that is attracted to the same sex like i'm a gay man or a gay woman and then based off the family i've grown up in based off the culture i'm in based off the religion i'm in i was told that being attracted to the same sex is a sin or being attracted to the same gender is is going to fill send me to hell or fill me full of shame and guilt so now what happens abdu is i make a conscious and then unconscious choice to suppress that natural part of me the natural part in this example being my sexual expression my sexual identity but that natural part of me doesn't just disappear it now becomes my shadow so when we do shadow work what we are doing is we are allowing these repressed parts of us that are still connected but in our shadow up to the surface to see the light of day to be alchemized back into our truth right and this links heavily to spiritual awakening because it's often connecting to our divine source to our spirit and our soul that allows us to do that work right so when i connect to my spirit my spirit is the one that is made of unconditional love and lets me know that it doesn't matter what other people outside of me are saying if i if my truth in this incarnation is being a gay man or a gay woman i deserve to stand in that truth how did, how did i go with that one abdu so so uh it's just owning my truths the claiming it 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 make me in alignment to be connected with my my spirit that's yes, it yes 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 and wow. and abdu i would say i don't know the bit to that it's it's coming back to alignment to all that you are right and most of us 
And it's not just like the example that I gave is just one little piece of us, right? Most of us are pushing away our voice. Most of us are pushing away our, you know, different characteristics. Most of us are pushing away, you know, different parts of our being. So when we connect to our spirits, this helps us accept every single piece of us, the light and the shadow. So uh, th- that also means that there is no light without a shadow. Yes. Yes. So this, Great. yeah. So do you want me to speak to that or do you have another question? Uh, uh, I have another question. I'll, I'll jump it. into that Go question because uh, I have like a, a one million question. Right <laughs> <laughs> and I appreciate it, Abdu. This is why I wanted to bring you on because I know that you're such a, a beautiful seeker of this truth. So yeah, keep them coming. Okay. Um, during my journey, I, 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 I witnessed myself to that spirits are, are always so connected to me and give me guidance whenever I'm in a rock bottom. So just by going to rock bottom is making me able to recognize that I have a spirit and uh, there, is, there, is a, there is a source spirit who can guide me to, to move forward to get out of that rock bottom. So is there is any link between that uh, repressed emotion negative repressed emotions and uh, uh, having that awakening, spiritual awakening, spiritual connection. Okay. So linked, so let me get, make sure I got your question right. So is there a link between link uh, suppressed and repressed emotions and connecting back to your spirit and having a spiritual awakening? Correct. That's your question. When that repressed and suppressed emotions got triggered and uh, my, my question, especially about uh, the moment when the person who got triggered and all repressed and suppressed emotions started to, co- to come to the surface. So at this moment, uh, I experienced myself always when I am in this space, something like a miracle happened. So I hope you got my question. Yes, yes, I do. I do get your question, my friend. And what I'm what I'll do here is, I'm going to explain the link, right? I'm going to explain the link between our beautiful emotional sensitivities and our emotional experience and the connection to that spirit, the spiritual awakening that we go through, right? Because that's a big part of what you're describing here. And I want to make something very clear for everyone, right? We we are not our thoughts and we are not our emotions, right? We are the experiencer of them, right? And I think we could have a discussion about, you know, how our soul, how our spirit actually creates a lot of our thoughts and creates a lot of our emotions. But for now, let's just keep it simple and say that our spirit and the observer that we are, right, is is the experiencer of the thoughts and the experiencer of the emotions. So with this understanding, to the degree that we suppress and, and repress our emotions, mostly due to trauma, challenge, pain outside of us, is the degree in which we shut off our connection to the experiencer, the experiencer being our spirit, our soul, our spiritual being. So conversely, on the other side of this, once we start to acknowledge the beautiful, emotional, sensitive being that we are, we start to feel and heal and channel our emotions through us then we also start to see an awakening of this spiritual essence, right? Because now the experiencer gets to experience, right? The experiencer, the spirit that we are now gets to move and speak through the physical form, right? Because as anyone that's had any kind of emotional release and has started to to let go and feel their emotions again, they've felt, they've felt power, they've felt emotion, they've felt they felt that divinity that you were just talking about move through them. And that's not a coincidence, right? It's because that spiritual essence wants to speak through this physical being in most cases, through those emotions, through those feelings. Does that answer your question? Abdu? No, oh, I'm amazed how, how quickly and uh, very, very clearly you are answering my question. I'm so happy to be here. So I will, I will go to the next part. Uh, my next question is about how to know what is what I'm feeling right now. What I'm sensing at this moment is coming from my my spirit. It's not my body. It's not my my thoughts. It's not my emotions. So, is there is any way that I can know the difference between what how my body is sensing, how my spirit is sensing? Yes, 
Yes. So good question, Abdu. And I just want to send you some love back, my friend. I'm, I'm very happy you're here too. And I'm ha- happy that you're tuning into that heart because I can feel it. So uh, what I want to explain here to you, Abdu, and people listening is I would encourage people to go back to the episode I did. Uh, I forget the number, but uh, I did an episode early. I think it's around episode 30, around the difference between thinking, feeling, sensing, and intuiting, right? Thinking, feeling, sensing, and intuiting, right? These are the four ways in which information, which is the consciousness that we are, the conscious, the how the soul or the spirit speaks to the human that we are it speaks through these four different pathways it speaks through thinking it speaks through sensing it speaks through feeling which is those emotions and it speaks through intuiting right intuition which you've talked about today abdu so to answer your question here we need to start learning the difference between these four different types right most of us have grown up in a world where we only focus in on the thinking Right, we get lost because we 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 feel because of the education systems that most of us have been educated in. We think that thinking is the only way to express the information through us. But as we've been talking about just in this chat today, we also have our emotions, we also have our senses, and we also have our intuition. So to answer your question, Abdu, how we how we learn to distinguish between if information is coming from our spirit and soul, right? We learn to understand the difference between those things. Right. So, for example, there is a very big difference between a thought, right? Because most of our thoughts come from the outside world, that most of our thoughts aren't even ours, right? Think about that for a second, right? We, most of us, with the, I think the, the latest number is 60 to 90,000 thoughts a day that we're thinking. Most of them, one, are not only, are not, only not ours, but most of them are also negative. Right. These are all the things, these are all the thoughts that we pick up from friends, from family, from the media, from school, from, from courses that we take, from other things, right? So this has a very different information process in your system than as you've talked about today, Abdu, intuiting, right? Getting a download, right? Just being in a space of love like we are now and something coming through you. That's not a thought. But, it, but we need to learn the difference. We need to learn to distinguish the difference, right? And this is a whole process and a muscle. And I would encourage people, one, to go back to listen to that episode, but two, really start to distinguish between these four different types. Uh, the episode is number episode 22 of the Cosmic Love Antenna. 2022. It's called Functions of Healing, Thinking, Feeling, Sensing, and Intuiting. Okay. So uh, what's your next question, my friend? My next question is uh, about so how to know the difference between the feelings that I have inside is coming from someone else or coming from a trigger or an event that I already uh, in. So I hope it's clear. Yeah, it does, my friend. This is a beautiful question. So yeah, we're we're trying to work out what is ours and what isn't. Right? How do we work out what is what's for example what is someone else's anger versus what is our anger? Right. What is someone else's sadness? What is someone else's belief around something versus what is our internal belief? Right. So this is a very important question for people along their spiritual awakening journey because these are the things that drain us. Right. These are the things that take us away from our truth. These are the things that disconnect us from really what we're meant to be doing. So we need to learn to flex this muscle, and. How I would define this muscle is when you start to become more sensitive, right? And this is, I just want to repeat this for everyone to hear, right? Your sensitivities, your emotional sensitivities, your spiritual sensitivities are your superpower. And this is why they become your superpower because the more sensitive you become, the more time you spend going inside of yourself to heal emotionally, mentally, spiritually, physically, the more attuned you become to what is yours and what is not. Right. So put very simply, you can actually get to the point, Abdu, where if I walk into a room and let's say my dad's in that room, or let's let me use another person because that ancestral healing is another topic. Let's say there's a I have a friend, right? A friend in that room that is angry. Right. I can actually get to the point where I can actually tune into my internal world for a moment and I can feel whether or not if that person is angry and they trigger my anger right? Because that, that means that they are being a reflection for what is inside of me, 
right? I've been projecting and now it's helping me see my anger. So I can learn to feel the difference between that versus that person having anger and me not having any of my own internal anger to move through. But now they're just projecting onto me, right? Now I'm taking on their stuff. So the the, the short answer here, Abdu, is we need to start learning and going inside of ourselves to feel right? Because we can start to feel the difference between the frequency of what is us and what is other people, right? Another way to explain this is we are all individual souls. Abdu, you know that, right? We're all individual souls that have a unique frequency, have a unique signature, right? And this also reflects through our emotions. So the more time we spend with ourselves, the more time we learn what our unique signature is and how it is different to the outside world. And that is reflected through the emotions that are projected onto us, right? So it's spending more time internally. And then the last thing I would say, Abdu, to give a little practical tip here that you can use, right? When you're in this in this environment and you're trying to look through those emotions and work out what is yours and what isn't, right? Remember that you can ask the question, right? You can ask your spirit, you can ask your soul, Right, focus in on that anger or that thought or that belief or that feeling and ask, is this mine? Is this me? Right. And your soul, your spirit will have, will at some point when you build the muscle, it'll start letting you know. Does that help, Abdu? No, very good answer, actually. And uh, I, I wish you, you used the father example. It, it was very real to me. And uh, Yes, it's very true. Uh, actually, I, I, I used to just come into the room and uh, uh, I, I I became angry just without to say anything. So that's why it's a very good answer for me. Yeah. Well, Abdu, let me, let me answer the father example for you, right? Because the it is different. It's different to what I just said because, and and I want you to hear this and other people, it's different to a, a friend that's not connected to your bloodline because when you walk into a room and let's use the same example, okay, let's say that my dad is angry, right? And I step into that room and let's say that I've cleared my anger, right? I've cleared my anger for now and he is actually, so what he's doing is now he's projecting his anger onto me, right? But the reason this will be different to the friend is I can actually decide because he's in my ancestral line. This is where ancestral healing comes in. I can decide because he's my father, that anger that he's projected onto me, that is purely just his. If I decide to take it into me and actually work with it and alchemize it and do the shadow work that we talked about before Abdu. Now what happens because I am his son I can actually heal that for him, right? This is where ancestral healing comes in, right? I can actually decide because of because I'm a powerful soul, I can take his anger, I can work with it, I can express it and heal it through my body. And because I'm linked to him, because I'm his son, that heals him, whether he is consciously aware of it or not. Does that make sense, Abdu? Yeah, yeah it does. How does that uh, feel? Hopefully, uh, hopefully that happens. I, I I do believe I'm doing the work, and I will feel so proud, so happy. I think that moment where I feel like uh, I'm healed, and uh, that's why I'm here, Harrison, because you really give me a very high value, and. Uh, uh, Thank you for answering that. You're welcome, my friend. So uh, I I know I'm aware about timing. So I have I really have a lot of questions. So I I will. Well, well Abdu, well Abdu, we can do a couple more. So just keep going. I'll let you know. Just keep going, my friend. Okay. Um, my next question is about um, spiritual bypass. Mm. How, how at some point in my life, I was using uh, meditation, yoga as a drugs, you know, like to numb myself to 
to not not to be connected with my mm. with my feelings and uh, through this conversation you mentioned many times that if i am connected with my feelings i will be in a spiritual awakening so mm. how does that make sense that people who are making meditation or yoga or whatever the, the practice is they are numbing themselves and even though they have a frequency uh, mm. uh, yeah so this is a really good question, Abdu. Thank you for asking it. So this is something I see a lot in the spiritual community and I've seen in my own journey, right? So I speak, I, I do speak from working with people with this, but mostly it comes from my own path and what I've learned about it. And let me be, let me define what a spiritual bypassing is for people that don't know. When we spiritually bypass, what we're doing is we are bypassing, as the name <laughs> alludes to, other parts of our being. In this case, maybe some of the emotional pain, the emotional trauma, and the emotional integration that we need to move through, right? So an example I would give for this, it's, it's let's say that we're doing, because I speak a lot about it on the show, let's say I'm focusing on inner child healing or inner child wounds, and I've, and I've acknowledged, let's keep, let's keep going with the anger theme today, Let, let's say I've acknowledged that there is some repressed and suppressed anger from my childhood that I need to feel and heal and move through me. What I could do is I could think and and maybe misunderstand that, okay, I need to connect to my spiritual being. So I'm going to drop into meditation like, like Abdu gave the example, and I'm going to connect to my oneness and my spiritual heights, and that is actually helping me heal that anger. But what people are missing is, yes, we need to connect to that oneness and that spiritual soul and being through meditational practices, but we need to come back. Right. What most people are doing is that they're connecting to their spiritual heights, staying in it for a bit to feel the bliss and the connection and the love, and then coming back, but forgetting to address the emotional pain, right? Forgetting to address that little child that still has that anger that she or he wishes to express. So, what we must do is we must connect to those spiritual heights, but then from that higher frequency, then address the anger, then address the guilt and the shame, then address the suppressed sadness, right? This is going back to the shadow work, Abdu, right? How we want to do shadow work, we don't want to do the shadow work in the shadow, right? We don't want to do the shadow work in the, in the, in the deepness of it all because it's very hard, right? Because we, we become the victim, right? And we feel like we, we can't see out of the sadness, out of the shame, out of the anger if we're in it. So what we want to do is raise our frequency to those spiritual heights, right? But then once we're in those heights, then address the shadows, right? Then invite that anger to be released. Then invite that sadness to be expressed through the body. Then invite that that belief that we want to reprogram to 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 reprogram it back into a more expansive thought rather than a limiting thought. Does that answer your question, Abdu? Yeah. Very beautifully. Very, very beautifully. Thank you. You're welcome. Let's do Abdu, Abdu, let's do let's do two more. Two more questions here. So the next one is going through that journey and being in con connection with my my spirit, my divinity. I realize that I'm losing people sometime and uh, I realize that sometimes people uh, doesn't understand me, you know. So I started to, to as much as I gain, as much as I lose, and as much as I'm, 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 I'm discerning, I'm, as much as I have discerning, as much as I am lost. So how to alchemize, how to, uh, you know, regulate that makes it feelings uh, and being in connection with the spirit at the same time, because this is a hard job for me. Mm. So let me see if I got your question, my friend. How do we balance our spiritual awakening and, this, and the feelings that come up around losing people and people moving in and out of our world, correct? Absolutely, absolutely, yes. Yeah, beautiful. So I'm going to share an analogy here. I'm going to share a metaphor and imagery for you. Abdu, that really highlights this journey, right? The, the, tra the, the life, the spiritual awakening path that we take is much like a train, a train moving down the tracks, 
I have to. And you are either the train itself or you're the conductor of the train. I'll let you pick which one you want to be in this imagery. And the 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 track that you're moving down and the stops along the way is your spiritual awakening, is your spiritual path. The passengers, the passengers that get on at all the different stops, right? Those are the people in your life, right? Those are the people that are in your life, family, friends, connections. Your role as the train conductor or the train itself is to not concern yourself with the passengers that are coming on or off. It is not your role to concern yourself with how long certain passengers will will stay on or how quickly each passenger will get off in between the tracks. Your role, my friend, is to the journey and to the path that you are taking, right? So this is how we start to move through and understand our relationships to the people in our lives along our spiritual awakening. Yes, we have soul contracts with family members, with friends, with lovers. And yes, we learn things from them both on both sides, benefiting, benef- having benefits from both angles. But at the end of the day, our main responsibility is to our path, is to our track, is to our journey. And if we get lost in each of the people that are getting on or not getting on, then we lose sight of what we are here to do as the individual soul expression that we are. So just to summarize that is whenever we get we get a bit triggered or disjointed from the people that are in our lives or not in our lives, then we send that love and we remember that it's okay to be like that. It's okay to be triggered, but come back to your path, your journey, and realize it's okay to have people for a short amount of time and it's okay to people have people for a long amount of time. Both are divine. Yeah, absolutely. That makes me feel relaxed, <laughs> you know. And uh, yeah. even if I'm even if I'm not aware, I I I find my divinity is, is coming to me and yeah. helping me as much as I as I'm connected when I'm not when I'm asking for help, it listen. Yeah. So yeah. Perfect, my friend. Okay. So I saved that question to the end. And uh, you know, Harrison, being in owning your truth, owning your light, I, I, I realize that usually people who are in their, in their light and, and serving, they are, they are a trigger just by being themselves for mm. the other people who are in childhood trauma and they mm. with, even without a connection. And mm. uh, they started to get attacked. Uh, so how to protect or to shelter ourselves or the people who are in their life from being attacked by the people who are in fight trauma and uh, unconsciously attack? Mm. So this is a this is a really good question, my friend, and thank you for saving it to last because this is, you know, I see this all the time again in my own journey, but also in the people around me, the, a lot of people that we know, Abdu, and a lot of people just in my life in general. So I, I'm just gonna I'm gonna answer it from just the individual, like what I would do if I was that individual, and because I have been that individual and I continue to be that <laughs> that individual. So what we must understand here is as our light starts to expand, right, as you beautifully highlighted, we start to attract the shadows, right? Not just our own shadows, but the shadows still not seen, still not felt, still not acknowledged in other people. So just coming to a pure understanding of that at first is is a way that we can have compassion and and love for when we do attract someone into our life that is triggered by our light is to understand what is going on, right? It's not, they're not broken. They're not evil. They're not dangerous. Well, I mean, they can be dangerous, but what I'm getting at is that we need to have compassion for what is happening, right? For whatever reason, they're unable to see their, do their shadow work or do their trauma work. And now they are unconsciously being pulled to our light and reacting right? And moving through it. So first step here is to have compassion for those people, right? Have love for those people that are on the attack, right? It's so much easier 
to project our pain outwards than deal with it internally. Right, I'll say that again. It's so much easier to project our pain outwards than to deal with it internally. So that is what most people are doing. Right? And I say that with love and I say that as someone who does it himself. Right. The next step here is to put up your boundaries. Right. We all have the capacity to put up boundaries to protect ourselves. Right. And of course, I think this is a whole different conversation if you're talking about like gun violence or, or something very severe, but let's just, let's put that aside for a second. Let's just say we're talking about trolls on the internet or someone sending you, sending you an abusive message, right? What we can do in that situation as the light that we are, right? We can put up our boundaries, right? We can send them love. We can send them compassion. We can send them respect, but then we can also respect ourselves and put up boundaries to separate ourselves from them right? Separate ourselves from those people that are in pain, right? And, and realize they're going through their own journey and their, their pain, their triggers, their perspective is not a reflection of us, right? Their projections, we can make the choice to, to let them define us or not, right? That's often why we get taken away by trolls. That's often why we get taken away by people on the internet, because we think that their projections define us. Right. We think that that horrible thing that that person said is my truth. But as we've talked about today, we always have the choice in whether to take on something that's not ours or not. Right. So the second step here is to put up powerful boundaries and to remember what your truth is. Right. And if you feel separated from it, if you're taking on their thoughts, their beliefs, you have all the power in the world to let that go. Does that answer your question? Up to. Yeah, a lot. And uh, you know what I note down from your your answer is to to spread my light, not to take in their darkness. Yes. Wow. Well, I, I feel more hungry to <laughs> for this conversation to carry on. I, I still I, I still have many many uh, like numbers, dark entities, light work, and. Uh, I, I I can't express how how grateful I am and uh, thank you, Harrison. Uh, uh, that really helped me to 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 be more compassionate with my father. And uh, today I feel like uh, I really know that he he loves me, and uh, I really know that despite whatever he did, he 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 was sharing his love. He just he just got raised in the same way and uh, I can see him today from a very different perspective because of that quick answers you give me and it's amazing how you can say something to change someone else's life perspective feelings and it's amazing how that affects the whole day today the whole way of thinking so I I can speak until tomorrow, and I will I will never uh, suppress my feelings about that to you. Uh, I just want you to know that I I really came here because I appreciate you because what you gave to me is precious. So thank you for honoring my journey with your gift. You're welcome, my friend. That's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you for showing up in your beautiful light, right? I receive all the love, but as all the listeners have tuned in today, they've got to experience your love and your light, right? Even if you're just asking these questions and really leaning in with an open heart, you know, that's just as valuable, right? And that's really why I wanted to do these episodes, not just to help everyone listening, but to help souls like you a lot more deeply in a new way. So thank you for receiving it today, Abdu. And I will definitely might have to do another question, another podcast episode in the future where we do this and i'm also excited to uh host a chat with you in your holding in your safe space clubhouse uh clubhouse community where we can where we can do more of this so if people if people are listening to this and have followed abdu in that community definitely look out for us over there as well so abdu i love you my friend we'll leave it there today beautiful souls Thank you for tuning into the episode. Thank you for giving us your time, your energy, and your attention. I hope my answers, I hope Abdu's beautiful heart gave you some solace today. If you want to be another community 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 member that I bring onto this show to do this kind of episode with, please go over to 
Apple and Spotify, leave your comments and reviews over there. And I'll pick, I'll pick the best review. And also I'll pick someone to bring onto the show and we'll do these episodes in the future, but please take action, take action on what you heard today. Take action on things that inspired you and let me know how they go until next time, sending love, sending light, and we'll see you very soon. Bye everyone. All right, beautiful souls. Before I leave you today, I'm excited to share an announcement and a powerful transformation with you. Starting on January 1st, 2023, I'll be launching a one-year coaching program one-on-one with me. So if you're looking to move through inner child wounds, ancestral healing, spiritual gifts, overcoming religious trauma, or anything else you hear me speaking about on this podcast, then this program is for you. This is your opportunity to spend a year in my frequency to help you expand one-on-one straight into your nuanced, specialized, and individual needs. This is for you if you're ready, if you feel committed, if that heart is pulling you to the change that you deserve. If you feel like this is you, please message me the word, the comments, the statement, one year love on my email or on my social channels and we'll book your free call to feel in and tune in together to see if we're a good fit for this beautiful transformation. Please be aware I'm only bringing on a certain amount of people for this. So if this is you, please take this advantage before I fill up all my spots. I'm excited if this is the pull that you need and I'm excited to get in touch and honored to take this journey with you. Sending love, sending light, and I'll see you on the next episode. Thank you for listening to the Cosmic Love Antenna Podcast. We hope you enjoyed. Be sure to follow Harrison on Instagram, Twitter, and Clubhouse at Harrison Ma. That's Harrison, M-E-A-G-H-E-R. Tricast.